Alright, hello and welcome to the most expensive and rarest classic EVO you can own in Gran Turismo 7. This is a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 GSR TM Edition Special Color Package. A very long name for a very special vehicle. Now you see this vehicle is, well, let me just explain. TM stands for obviously Tommy Mackinnon. If you don't know who that is, big time rally driver back in the day and absolute icon in the Mitsubishi world. He decided to commemorate his four championship wins by creating a super rare Evo. Well, with this being one of 2,500 ever created. So yes, a very rare and that's why it is a very expensive vehicle. And if you wanna get your hands on it, well, you're gonna need to head on over to a used car dealership and spend 173,000 credits, which is a lot of money for a classic Evo. Especially one that is one that's so closely matched to the previous generation Evo. Yes, the Evo 6 and the Evo 5, I see barely any difference in it. Yes, they managed to squeeze just a bit more power out of the Evo 6, making it produce 311 brake horsepower. Even though both EVOs, the EVO 5 and EVO 6 came in at the same weight, there isn't really that much of a difference. Now, this vehicle, if you actually want to take it around a circuit, around Kyoto Driving Park, you are going to be setting decently quick lap times because look, the EVO 6 is not a slouch at all, it gets down. You see yourself coming out here to try and park straight away, doing about 207 kilometers per hour, which doesn't seem like much because, okay, you know what, it actually isn't much. But the handling of the EVO 6 is not too shabby. There is no point in time where I thought, okay, cause for concern, this is going to be an issue. Overall, it drove like a 90s JDM vehicle. It met my expectations, I was not disappointed, and it's everything you expect from an EVO of this time. But you can expect the same experience from the EVO 5, which is a lot cheaper. So what is the point of getting the EVO 6? Well, as I said, it's super rare, but when we actually take this vehicle and fully upgrade it, that's when we actually feel the full capabilities of this vehicle because now instead of the vehicle producing 311 brake horsepower it produces 562 brake horsepower and comes in at a weight of 1060 kg so the vehicle is rather lightweight it produces a lot more power and that equates to a lot faster lap time when it comes to going around KL to driving park or any circuit for that matter now the EVO 6, we see that previously when it was stock, it was doing lap times around the 1 minute 55 second mark around Kyoto Driving Park. However, now with it being fully upgraded, we see lap times around the 1 minute 34 second mark, which makes it decently competitive in modern day standards. It's a fast vehicle. And just the thing that honestly sits with me the most is the handling of the EVO 6 with it being fully upgraded with its standard engine. This vehicle is such a fantastic vehicle to drive. There's no understeer, there's no oversteer. The vehicle is extremely planted, it's extremely darty, extremely responsive. Everything you want out of a vehicle, the EVO 6 does exactly that and you cannot fault it on anything with the vehicle being fully upgraded on max downforce racing soft tires overall it's just a great track vehicle now the thing is when we take it off-road yes it is good it does handle the pumps as you know an evo is supposed to be good off-road and this is no exception however for me personally i just enjoyed my time a lot more with this vehicle being on a surface the evo 6 overall is just everything you would look for in a vehicle now the thing is with the evo 5 the biggest issue i had with that vehicle was often it understeered it oversteered but as we see with the change of generation they resolved all those issues because with having the vehicles have relatively the same setup in it 
the Evo 6 handles just dramatically like worlds better than the Evo 5 and I really enjoy that because the Evo 5 had all of the hype, it had everything it needed to be a fantastic vehicle, however it just didn't meet it due to the ending whereas with the Evo 6 that is not the case, this is a very good vehicle overall. Now for 178,000 credits that is a steep price but we can make it well worth it by turning this vehicle into something that can actually make our money back. So by actually spending a bit more money and investing into the EVO we can then head on over to GT Auto and actually engine swap it with the engine from the final edition EVO Group B rally car. So yes, it means that we are going to be spending 325,000 credits, but after slapping on a high RPM turbocharger, the vehicle will produce 788 brake horsepower. That is nothing to bat an eyelid at. That is decent power, and especially if the vehicle can handle the way it does with its engine being fully upgraded, well, the standard engine being fully upgraded, it's going to be an absolute weapon to drive. And the thing is, when we take a back one over to Kyoto Driving Park, we see the vehicle now says lap times around the 1 minute 31 second mark, which is a lot faster than the standard engine fully upgraded. And that's what you love to see. I was worried that, okay, it's going to be a bit too much power for the Evo to handle and the Evo just wasn't going to be that good of a vehicle. Like, it was actually going to be too powerful for its own good and not be as good but that's not the case it handles it like an absolute champ it's fantastic to drive and overall an enjoyable experience that i cannot say anything bad about and when we take it off-road now the issue is with it having so much more power i feel like it spins the wheels up a lot more than it needs to and because of that it's not really putting the power down it's more just spinning its wheels and it's not setting the fastest lap time possible so i think if we actually pull a bit so i think if we pull a bit of power out of it well we'll actually be able to see faster lap times than the one we were able to get which was a 1 minute 17.3 which frankly isn't the fastest thing out there now if we do turn this thing into a money grinding machine well the wtc 700 is calling our name with us just doing a bit of tweaking to a vehicle, we can drop it down to the correct performance points level and see a vehicle that can travel over 300 km per hour and set sub 4 minute lap times on the initial lap, which is just a fantastic vehicle and you know it's going to be a good money grinding vehicle. And it also helps that you can go 3 laps without needing to refuel this vehicle. So yes, the EVO 6 GSR Tommy Mackinnon edition special color package oh and by the way special color package that is just the black stripe along the side of it that is the special package so do I see this Evo being worth 178,000 credits no I'm gonna be honest with you no but because of its rarity and the history behind it I can see why the price is that high so overall will i say you know what go out and get the evo 6 yes if you are picking between the evo 5 and the evo 6 and you're on a budget okay go for the evo 5 but if you have the money by all means go out spend a bit more money and just get an overall better vehicle with the evo 6 so that's my final opinion on the EVO 6, but I want to hear your thoughts of this vehicle in the comment section down below. And with all this being said, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for your time, and I will see you guys in the next Grand Turismo 7 video. Peace.